Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay. This is how we grow up with the Bar Talk with Jay. And of course, we got Craft Magic in the building. What's up, Smooth Jay? Man, we trying to make it happen. We trying to make it happen. Yeah. We got Barbara behind the scenes. Barbara, hello, Barbara. I'm here. There you go, Barbara. Do me a Can you tell me that? Glad you're you. You, you kind of got that. We missed you last week. Yes, she was missing. She was missing in action, but it's all good. She's back now. She's back. Absolutely. But Craftmatic, how you doing, Dick Baby? Man, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Looking forward to the holidays. Uh oh. Oh, you got some special plans? Uh, nothing, no, nothing in particular, man. I'm just gonna, uh, just gonna have the specialness in my heart and okay. just enjoy the season, you know. Okay. It's, uh, it's gonna be a nice holiday, man. And uh, how about you, man? How you doing tonight? Man, let me tell you, man. I am blessed to be here as always, man. Okay. I kind of rush to get here, and then I had to slow myself down. Mm. You know, a lot of times when you get to a stage where you don't, I like to be punctual. Okay. So a lot of times we we start rushing. Right. Well, to me, I, I scale back. Because that's my old way of thinking. Right. So how about think about what you're going to do when you get there, all right? Because right. I can't stop traffic. Right. Atlanta traffic are always going to put you somewhat behind. So you try to plan ahead, leave earlier, but also plan when I get there what I'm going to do. Exactly. To strategize the fact that I lost a little time here, I can make up for it because I have a plan once I get there. There you go. And at that point, it becomes a more success than what just happened. Yeah. So I'm not stressed over the fact I got caught up in traffic. Right. I'm more or less... Just dealing with it. Absolutely, man. So that's just life, man. I mean, this is man, a situation. I tell you, you, you know, this is a little bit of a side note, but uh, I was telling a friend of mine about this book called The Alchemy, yeah. The Alchemist. And uh, the book is basically about how this young man, uh, he grows up in an environment where they're, they uh, cut glass, okay. right? They're masters of glass cutting. And uh, he doesn't want to be a part of the family business, so he decides he's going to do something else and kind of goes on about his life and his business. And he runs into four or five major hurdles in life. Mm -hmm. And the whole time he's running into those hurdles, uh, he's thinking that it's just his world coming to an end. But by the end of the story, uh, he realizes he gets stuck in a hard place and has to go back home mm -hmm. and be with his father at glass cutting and realize that he enjoyed glass cutting. And that all of those mishaps and failures and troubles was leading him back to doing what his life's purpose and passion is. So we can't fight the, the, the things that come, you know, come about on a daily basis, those little troubles and little challenges, because they're only pathways to get where you're truly trying to be and where you need to be in life. So um, just a side note, but you know, one of those things that uh, it's something to think about. Hey, man, that's, that's a good nugget. Nothing is ever out of place, you know. I like that one. I like that one just because without this one through, it just fits right in. There it is. The Alchemist. Everybody should get that book. Um, it's a fabulous book. They have it on audio book too. You probably can get it free online. Um, it will add value, I can tell you that. It changed uh, a lot in me. Uh, let's do a quick recap for uh, last week's show. How do we deal with the obstacles of life in order to progress? Man, I think we killed that one pretty good when we did that show. Yes, and we did. Then you go back and check it out. Because again, you, you really have to put a plan down. Right. And you got to look at how you've been looking at things. Because I really like to say your thinking what really needs to change. Right. To get you past some of the hurdles in front of you. Because again, like you said, if you take your uh, initial thoughts off the problem and start getting into the solution, the problem gets smarter. I right. mean, smaller. Right. And um, I appreciate you for saying that because it's so true. Uh, I had some issues out on the route. One of the things I looked at is, okay, I got those issues and I have these problems, but when I started looking at solutions for each one of them, all of a sudden I just had a situation. Yeah, you just had a situation. It, 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 just, it, it goes away almost that easy once it gets repetitive in your mind. Once it changes in your mind. But it takes a minute to get there. So I'll tell you all day long, don't just run out there thinking it's going to happen overnight. It's, it's interesting you say that. It, you say it takes a minute. It, it, and the assumption there is that it takes a little while to get there, but uh, it doesn't take a little while to get there. You have to start training your mind to get there immediately. And you can change your mind at the snap of a finger if you'll train your mind to do so. To take anything that looks big, make it small, and, and, and determine that you are the giant and you are about to put this thing to rest. 
And when you make that conscious decision, something happens greater than just changing your mind. Something happens in your spirit that will start to fight those, those items that you're up against and it will start uh, changing the situation and the circumstance. Hey, Barb, can you turn me down just a little bit? I think number four. So, uh, so yeah, man, that's what it's about. It's about making, the, you know, all the situations and circumstances just a little smaller in our minds first, you know? And I tend to agree with you. Totally. Uh, I, I think you answered what I said because it's, I said it take a minute. But again, the, the training, when you do it, it, it is instantaneous. Right. But you got to get used to doing it. That's so that's why I said it took a minute because I'm always trained to go back to old way of thinking. Mm -hmm. I, I'm used to old habits. And again, that's one of the things I have to change. And that's why I said take a minute. But I like your narrative because I like how you look at it because I have to look at the same one. Right. I have to immediately just go back to remembering and changing my thought pattern. And it, it becomes instantaneous. But so it takes a minute yeah. for me. Yeah. But I ain't gonna talk about the rest of y'all. Y'all might be brighter. <laughs> well, no, Jay, no, it, Jay need a little it, help. It, it all it all is about a trained mind, Jay. Okay. We well, gotta my, we gotta train our minds, and that's what my, my mind's still on training wheels. That's what it be falling. The, my head kind of big. That's what the <laughs> Lord was attempting to do when He gave us the word. Is yeah. He was trying to keep our mind focused on Him and focused on right understanding and right direction and right action and right thinking, uh, rather than the wrong stuff. See, when your mind's on the wrong stuff, you have a tendency to follow the path of the wrong stuff. I've and, been down uh, that road. Yeah, we all have, right? So uh, here's my kind of lesson for last week: uh, when obstacles arise take them serious. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to recognize that, hey, this is an obstacle. All right? Don't just wade in the, in, the, in the water wondering what's going on. Say, oh, you know what? I have an issue here. Mm -hmm. I got a problem. I have a, an, an obstacle. It's time to face it. I want you to treat them. So take them serious, but treat them like they aren't real mm -hmm. because they aren't real. And in fact, as soon as you change your mind, the obstacle will almost fade away. You see where I'm coming from, Jake? Smooth grass, <laughs> <laughs> That's that smooth grass, man. Man, listen, man, that's a, that was an exciting subject. And I think we did it. Uh, we did a lot of justice uh, during that talk. So uh, I ask you all to go back, listen to it, uh, spend some loving time with those words. Uh, I'm hoping that they'll help you, someone that you know. Um, we all face obstacles. They're a natural part of life. We're never going to get away from it. It's just the way the world works. But as soon as we get... Uh, our problem-solving mindset mm -hmm. on the front, then um, you'll find that we'll move a little bit smoother through life and obstacles will only look like opportunities and mm -hmm. we'll drive forward knowing that something greater good is about to come out of whatever you're about to face. You listen to crap. Boy, I tell you. See, that's why I, I talk to you all the time. You're just so smooth with it. Your <laughs> words just flow. And you make me feel like, you know, why haven't I had you in my life earlier? Because I, I have some difficult things going on for no good reason. Yeah, I understand. So I appreciate you, man. Appreciate yeah. you. Appreciate I, I appreciate you too, Jay. Right, I appreciate man. you too, man. I'm starting to get bushy. Oh, I, I okay. know. It's easy, man. It's easy to do. Uh, the topic for tonight. Oh. Uh, our, our, yeah. What we call our hot topic, our inspirational topic. We're going to talk about giving. Well, wow, crap. It is getting close to Thanksgiving here, it buddy. It is the perfect time to talk about giving. Right. Mm. So we talking about turkeys dressing? Oh, oh I'm just hungry again. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, my bad. It's making me hungry. I'm about to tell you. <laughs> right. food up here. I'm going to Piccadilly to bar and get me a turkey dressing just because you mentioned it. Hey. So uh, this is a season for giving, and uh, ultimately giving means thinking about self less. And so uh, this is an opportunity for us to uh, wake up to the idea that mm -hmm. giving is necessary in our world. And if we don't participate in giving, we don't create good karma in our lives. Mm -hmm. Because when you give, you open the doorway to receive. And so uh, this whole season is about really, really letting go of the past and putting forth the greatest amount of love that you can express in 2017 holiday season. Um, there's all types of opportunities to give. Uh, and those are things like, obviously, you can give to your church, you can give to your neighbors, uh, you can feed the homeless, and you can give clothes uh, to those who are less fortunate. You can buy toys, uh, turkeys for families. I mean, there's just an unlimited number of ways to give. Give money. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with giving money, but it takes a lot more thought and a lot more heart to give things that you go and buy for them. 
you know. Right. So you go you go out and shop for people, you really put your heart and soul into it. And not it's not to say that your money is not good, it's just to say that there is a greater level than just your money. Put some love into the you know, it season. And I like to say on that note right there, uh, special announcements, one of the things that Bar Talk with Jay did, we actually teamed up with Walk by Faith Ministry. Okay. And again, that is uh, Pastor Alan Cater Jr. And uh, also First Lady Mary C. Um, they have been doing great things in the community. A uh, small organization, uh, I know Alan Cater personally. Um, and he's been going out feeding the, hom the homeless for a minute now. Okay. Um, and I wanted to team up with him because again, I like to make sure things make it out there to the ones that's a second away from, to me, maybe losing a life over the cold and right. hunger. Right. And again, a lot of people look down on um, a lot of people that's out there on the street. And I like to say that's a decision away that could have been you. Yeah. And, um, and just a reminder, Tyler Perry was homeless at one time. Yes. So it's amazing if we show enough care for them, how they can turn around. So uh, we teamed up with them. And again, they're, they're needing a lot of different things. Uh, out there on the street, blankets, uh, toothpaste, socks, things to stay warm. Right. Uh, right now, people are giving them food because it's getting close to Thanksgiving, but they're going to need other things because it's getting cold. Right. Um, so we teamed up with him, and I, I'm asking everybody to get what they can. And again, he has a non, uh, a charitable contribution for his church. Okay. And I want to make sure everybody goes straight to his site. Uh, I teamed up because I want to make sure I do something in the community. Uh, when he goes out there to do some of these things by giving out some of the blankets and the food, I want to be there. Yeah. Um, again, I could just give him money. All right, and give out my pocket. Yeah. I don't think that's what I'm called to do. Absolutely. I think at this point in my life, I'm called to be out there and being a part of a solution. Absolutely. Of a situation I did not cause. Right. And right. if I can get everybody else to do that, I think we might be in a position where we can get away from a lot of different things. Yeah. And you know what, Jake? Uh, it's, it's such it's such a fitting set of words for today's times. Uh, because uh, these hurricanes, and uh, I had a chance just yesterday to see about 50 or 60 pictures from uh, the hurricanes in Houston. Mm -hmm. And uh, just devastating, devastating. Um, you know, it was just a devastating storm and a lot of people lost, not only lost lives and friends and special someones, but all their personal memories and mm -hmm. they lost their homes. You know, people with these fires out in California, uh, I think it's like 5,000 people lost their home. Uh, I just had a friend at work just uh, a few days ago uh, whose apartment burned up. And it, Basically, you know, she was left with nothing. Wow. Um, and so I, as soon as I heard it, immediately, only thing I could think about is what can I give? How can I share with other people? Uh, because people are needing uh, your portion. Um, you know, the, the world needs you to be involved in helping sustain the world. And uh, there are many of, you know, many of folks who are less fortunate. So let's make sure that we pay, uh, we pay attention to that this season. Um, those who are in need, make sure that you reach out to them proactively. One of the things that I really like about Jay is that he always likes to be ahead of the curve. And, uh, and I think that's a, a, a very poignant point for giving, is that you got to plan your gift. Right? You, don't go, you don't go buy your special loved one's Christmas gifts on Christmas Eve. You start right now. Okay? And you don't think about what you're going to do for the homeless. Um, you know, the day after Christmas, think about it now. Go sign up for volunteer opportunities in the schools, in the, you know, the, the, uh, the nursing homes. They need songs sung to them, you know, the elderly folk. Uh, there's just so many ways to give, and uh, we just want to be inspirations of life, man. Uh, everybody has a part to play, and uh, you should decide what your part is right now, and then you'll be more effective at giving during the holiday season. And I'm telling you, Jay, what we're really talking about here is creating some of that good old fashioned karma, you know? Um, you Stare it up, Craig. Yeah, you know, and, up. and karma is just worldly, you know, but what we're really doing is we're opening our own lives and our own minds and hearts to God's grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. And and it just pours on us. I mean his mercy and his grace will just pour upon our lives 
so that we'll never have a, a need. There, there'll never be a void space. There'll never be a dry space in your life. But it only happens by way of, of giving. You got to get rid of the old so that you can open the door for the mm -hmm. new. And, and, and see. man, listen, boy, I'm about to teach you. I'm about to hear you. I'm about to hear you. I'm kicking my feet over here, brother. I'm saying, I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. So, uh, so, man, I, I get excited about giving. I get excited about people. I get excited about love. And uh, that's what this show is all about. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined us before, uh, this is Bar Talk with Jay, and all we want to do is inspire. Inspire people to become their greatest possibility. Inspire people to do the right thing. Inspire people to spread more love. And uh, by talking about situations and circumstances, we're hoping that, that we're hoping that it opens doorways in your minds and hearts to make new decisions for yourself new decisions for your family and uh and get your hustle on you know we uh, we talked several weeks ago we only got really about 20 25 years to go hard in the paint you know the other 25 years is you know learn half of it's growing and learning the other half of it is trying to make up for past mistakes and hurts and pains and all that other good stuff but you got 25 good years to live you know hard in the paint and uh and it's time to step up to be your greatest possibility it's time for the world to step up and be its greatest possibility a lot of nonsense going on don't let none of it fade you just stay strong in the spirit from day to day moment to moment man. there you go and again we're about to go to break but all y'all that want to give, um, and again, the reason I, I teamed up with uh, Pastor Allen is because, again, some people just don't have the time, and this man is out there doing the work. Right. So, of course, we're going to team up with people that's out there that's giving back and caring, and I can endorse him. And I've seen him in action, and I'm going to be out there, and I'm going to film what I can to show y'all where y'all things are going. Because, again, we got a time where everybody complaining about ain't nobody out here doing anything. It's up to us to start doing. Okay, Absolutely. quit looking at the mega churches and talking, and let's start walking. Let's do the work, and that's what's necessary. And that's again, walk by faith ministry, and that way y'all can give it directly to him. And I think he has on his website already all the things that he's asking for. I know if not, you can go to my website, and I think on my website I got his stuff on there. And that way y'all can find them easily. Yeah, or you, just go to Pastor Alan Cater as well. Yeah, that's it right there. Pastor Alan Carter. Pastor, uh -huh. Pastor, Pastor Alan, Alan. Alan Carter Jr. There you go. I'll be messing and, name uh, all of And uh, <laughs> First Lady Mary C. Yeah, there you go. Ooh, I yeah. like that name. I want me one of them one of them First Ladies. Have it out. Good. Not her, you know what I'm saying? Okay. There's, there's plenty of First Ladies. I know who you want. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, should we talk about what you want? <laughs> you know something, crap. You always thought it's a mess over there. See how crap be y'all. Hey, That's why we about to go to break. I can't believe you. Even your son laughing in the corner about that one. Man, <laughs> oh, I know he ain't laughing. There ain't nobody email for his behind yet. <laughs> That's because he got it so good right now. No, here. it wasn't. Well, hey. we Boy, you getting over like I'm a fat you, rat, boy. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find somebody to email him. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be right back. We're about to go to break. Yeah. Uh, what's the special song for tonight, man? Man, uh, I got a few new and interesting songs. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let's uh, let's make sure we tag the remainder of the show. Uh, tonight's topic is being financially successful. That is correct. What are you willing to sacrifice? Ooh. Right? Now, in so other words, in order to get something, you got to you give up something. something. Ah! And we want to talk about what you have to give up. Because what you have to give up really ain't as big. It's it is very small in compared to what you get. Ah. So uh, so let's go to break. And uh, we got a dynamic show lined up for you as per usual. Uh, Smooth J and Craftmatic, we on fire tonight. <laughs> Welcome back with Bar Talk with Jay the Way Craft. This brings us that glow, that high frog glow. Yes, sir. Made me feel like I got a Jerry curl. <laughs> <laughs> got that drip, drip, drip. You know what I'm saying? That smooth craft. I like that, man. I yeah, like that. That was hot. The that was hot. That's brand spanking new. Too. Yeah, they're going to find out more about that when they meet them. Yeah. Okay, that's that special guest. Y'all got to stay tuned for that. Yeah, Jay. Pull some things out half the time. You do, bro. You 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 come with it. You come with it. I'm but looking you, forward to tonight. You gotta remember we got that. a celebrity in the house tonight. We, we do. But we already got a celebrity in the house. We do. You know, but 
But you know, he liked to be under the curtain. You know what, what I'm saying? You so know what that too? Don't want to say that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> Don't want no problem. But listen, that's let him play his position. You know what I'm you know saying? Something? And he played it quite well. Yeah. And we're gonna advertise yeah. that come the age yeah. of because he you did know, some things I want everybody to You know to what, see. man? Sometimes the people who are the quietest mm -hmm. are the most effective. You know, they they get things done and you don't even know they done got it done. They they they, they ain't even boast about it, you know they ain't said nothing about it. You know what that's what that is? That's a, they let their work speak for it. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I want them to check absolutely, out the eight o'clock hour because his work don't yeah. speak mirror. Yeah, I'm telling you, people's you know, there's some people got some real mouthpieces, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. They can say a lot, but oh, they don't get nothing done. You know what I mean? Oh, okay, so, so I guess this is where TK gets in there. Oh. Tick, tick. <laughs> Grass started. Grass started. TK, you on the bottom girl. Uh oh. You with us, yeah. TK? Uh oh. All right. She's there. She just not seen. She. Oh. She there somewhere. I oh. need you to come to the surface. I TK. know. Break, make her rise up. <laughs> <laughs> Only craft can make it happen. So dirty, Jay. Man, I'm just saying, man, you gotta put that macaroni and cheese on the plate. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a same. Ain't nothing like some too. cheesy snacks. I know she gonna be on in a minute. You you with us yet, TK? TK, man. TK. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so uh um, say something. I mean Can something. you can you hear us, TK? I can, I can hear you now. Okay. okay. She can hear us, but we, we can't hear her. Hold on. Okay. Audio here, all right. Know. Yeah, we got a little audio thing going on here, and uh, so how are you tonight? I'm well. How are you? I'm doing so good. I'm so good, and uh, yes, ma'am. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Let me get on over here and just block it. You know, Jay got to be blocking, blocking. Mm -hmm. Happy holidays to you, honey. Happy holidays. Whatever. You don't even know how she doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you mm. so much. Thank you so Whatever. much. Whatever. So, hey, TK. <laughs> hey, honey. Hey, hey, hey. I got honey out of it. See, I'm talking about. See? You got to treat TK well. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? She ain't one of those smooth girls. Hey, you, know, you got to you, you go to TK the right way. Hey, girl. She responds. Yeah. You, you got to go up, girl. She, hey, hey. You know what I'm saying? You got to go home and slam stuff on the counter and you get TK's attention. You come in and be like, hey, baby. She's like, whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. Well, uh, oh, I, I guess you expect me to cook for you, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You slam some stuff down. You need to get in there and take care of it. She'd be like, oh, baby, really? She get all <laughs> this soft, you know? She get soft when you get hard. You come, he you with, come soft? He paid oh, your face, she okay. hard. What you got for oh, us tonight? My bad, man. my bad. Yeah, yeah. I, got it, I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are crazy. Oh, all day? holiday. My question is, I like to, I, when you get into a situation and you kind of family, follow family traditions, when is the perfect time to start introducing your own traditions? Like, I don't like traditional for turkey and ham. I want to do these things for thank you. And something that I haven't had for 40 plus years. Yes. When is it okay to start transitioning into your own traditions with your spouse or significant other? I say right now and as soon as possible, <laughs> right? <laughs> Crab just wants some seafood. <laughs> oh man, listen, you know, when you when you in your middle years like we are, right, we done right. spent 30, 40 years doing the same old right. things. Right now is the time to engineer your own memories, right? right, right. Uh, and whatever that means for you. You know, my family and I, we would do Thanksgiving and Turkey on one holiday and the other holiday we was gonna do a big barbecue or we uh -huh. were gonna do a seafood fest. Right. But uh, but we, right. we we ch we change it up, you know. Sometimes uh, dad and I would on purpose say, Okay mama, we know how good you can cook, but we're not gonna put you through that this year. We going to find a fine restaurant and we gonna just just ball out of control at your favorite restaurant on the holiday and then uh, you know we'll we'll get a few you know some honey baked ham you know okay. shipped to the house or something so we can at least have snacks that night and maybe a few things for lunches for the rest of the week because um, you know the holiday goes on just from the regular day you know mm -hmm. and, you know we have to have that for lunch right. and dinner the next day so I say break your traditions right now uh, there's nothing wrong with just opening the doorway for creating those traditions and what kind of traditions are you thinking about what? What's what comes across your mind? I'm over the year. I'm just turkeyed out. I'm 43. I've been in turkey since 
Right. I just want to do something different. I want to do seafood for many months. Do a, a thing like an Italian thing, something that's not not traditional to me, that's an right. Italian thing, or you do Greek food, or something something that's different that you can create your own memories with your own family. And it's good that I have my memories with my mom. Right. And my kids have those memories too, but I want them to have separate and individual memories with me. Right. Right. I I I like what you're saying, but uh, also have that conversation. Okay. Because again, I tell Craft say, yeah, right now, hold on. <laughs> you might want to sit down with your significant other and just make sure he's aware that you want to do some things differently. Um, because again, it's not wrong right. with changing up you by yourself. You saying you want to change up, I'm surprised you would go this long because there's no reason why you shouldn't. But when you're with somebody, just make sure you have that communication because he might have wanted the same thing as well. But without that communication, you probably be calling me back saying something else and again I don't want to push you into a position where it becomes an argument or you, you, you're you going against the grain when a lot of stuff is just a conversation and a talking point yeah you know um, e even things like um, you know it took me a lot of years even with my family my wife and kids mm -hmm. to, to, to change the tradition of opening gifts and so they were always used to opening gifts a gift the night before, at least one gift one the gift. night before, oh, yeah. and then we open up. Yeah. But I was always of the notion, no, you need to wait, and then you know what I'm saying, you know, full day, five, six o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, yeah. we're gonna have coffee and we're gonna get at it. So uh, it took me a little while to just break, you know, my own family's tradition for my children, but they like to open gifts the night before. Who doesn't, right? I mean, that is more they stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be mad at them. They suckered you into it. Right, right. Now my whole thing is, and that was the case, you get that one gift that you just put to the side because that's the gift they can do early. Right. But the rest of that stuff you're going to wait on. Right. And it's an enticing. Yeah. Always making something off the wall. Right. Not showing anything. Is that, yeah, Dollar Tree type. You right. <laughs> they be like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Knowing they got some good stuff underneath that tree, but you, you got to throw them off a little bit. Yeah. And I like to say sometimes, the smaller gifts been played with more than the bigger gifts. Mm -hmm. Because again, you, you, you're buying them from the heart and you bought that little cheap one and, and you think it's just a, a cute car. Right. But you see them play with that car more than they play with the the video games. And, Absolutely. Well, no, not the video games. They're going to play that. But yeah. some other stuff that you might have spent high dollars on. And again, it's always in the thought. Yeah. And and, and let's just, you know, since we got a few more minutes, let's just talk about some other things mm -hmm. uh, in terms of breaking traditions. Uh, what type of tree that you get for the holiday? Uh, you know, we, you know, I get a fake tree. Yes, I mean, some people are okay with fake trees. Some people want a, a real, you know, a real tree. tree. Uh, there's some people who yeah. want to naturally decorate, and there's some people who want to get, you know, order all kind of extreme ornaments for the trees and toppings for the trees. Um, you know, you know, baking some different types of cakes and pastries for your house. Yeah. Um, uh, is always a good idea. Maybe even sometimes traveling for the holiday could be uh, uh, yeah. breaking right. that tradition. Yeah, I, I like that. See, that so that's that's my plan is, is to be in Disney for Christmas. I don't want to be home. Fabulous. I want to take my kids, take family to Disney. Yes. That's more of the gift they have. And then you know you have one or two gifts because the trip takes up a big chunk of your budget. Right. So you do that and have a couple of gifts and then you do something different. Yes. I want to be in the house. I don't want to put a tree up. I don't want to vacuum up pine needles that's why I got a fake tribe and vacuum up pine trees tree needles right. since I was eight. I don't want to do that. Right. I just want to so do the house so when, when yeah. all that stuff it takes a lot a lot yeah. of work and it takes away some of the time to deal with your family. So yeah. Yeah. you put the quick easy way and you have to actually get to spend the time with your family. Yes, and I think the time is the most important. Um, I think about the the mothers and grandmothers spending countless numbers of hours in the kitchen mm -hmm. toiling in over kitchen. those meals and you know and they enjoy cooking and enjoy giving but it takes a lot out of them and uh so for those of us around those giving folk sometimes we got to protect them from themselves and uh, just say you know what mama you ain't cooking this year you know, we're going to do something different. We're going to, you know, we'll we'll do something different. <laughs> look at Jay. Jay what? looking at me kind of crazy. Mama ain't what? <laughs> oh, listen. <laughs> mama, 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 mama up there. Hold on, play. Jay, 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 Jay,
I keep it cool, mama, but you in that kitchen. <laughs> she got to be in the kitchen. Mama got to be in the kitchen. You know the hardest thing is because you do everything with us, traditionally with us, we do everything from scratch. We go to the farmer's market and we're picking up our peas and our greens mm -hmm. and our sweet yeah. potatoes and yeah. potatoes. Those things have to be peeled and cleaned and prepped. Mm -hmm. That takes two or three hours. Then washing the greens takes another 30 minutes mm -hmm. and you got to cut them up. And yeah. The greens by themselves eat for two hours. Easily. And, and easily two hours. They all work. Cake from scratch, so you have to buy the cake flour and doing all this stuff. Like, nobody wants a store bought cake. Don't nobody want no patty pie. We want a real sweet potato pie. We mm -hmm. in the kitchen forever. And then you get you have to kill your family because if you go in the kitchen making noise, we still say if you make my cake fall, get out here with all that noise. So right. My cake fall. I'm <laughs> kidding. We, right. we still be the same. It takes and you up all night. If you face your church on your degree, whatever the case is, if you face your church, you up and down all night, face it in it, and you make sure it's not dry. I don't know what you're talking about. My people call your church be dry. Yeah. So you want to be up all night. And, and I don't eat the ham, but my family does. Yeah. So you put the ham, and you got to do the whole ham. You go to the market and get a ham, you cut it up, and coke it, the pineapples and the cherries. Ooh, they yeah, sit on my door. Yes. And it's just mud and the brown sugar. You just do them a lot. And by like the time it's time to eat them, you're so tired, you can't even enjoy the meal with your family. I, I oh, know. Just, like, TK, I, like I, I ain't gonna lie, girl, I always know you'd be a thug. I ain't know you was a thug yet, know how to cook. <laughs> right? God, I was born in the South. Okay. I was born and raised here. Okay. 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 I like that. It's not always in me. I like that. I can I, cook. I like that. Um, I, uh, I just want to introduce, we got a couple more minutes, I just want to introduce uh, just one other idea that I really like. Um, several years ago, my best friend sent me a, a holiday card, and it was basically a picture of he and his family, his wife and his kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had some pictures of them out on the beach and, you know, at the park and at the last concert. And they just made a nice collage and they made it into a holiday card and sent it out to friends and family. That card meant more to me than any gift that I could have possibly gotten because it sat on my mantle and I could, it was a picture of my family, you know what I'm saying? It was a picture of my boy and my, my, my godchildren and, um, you know, sending out those type of messages and those type of, you know, cards or information, that, that is just so meaningful to your family. And if you have the, the wherewithal to do those and send them out, your family will get a lot of joy. You may can buy less gifts if you send more of yourself. Mm. And um, and so I just encourage you all to, you know, maybe just, again, spread the love. Spread the love this season. As we get ready to close this segment, any any parting words for us, TK? No, I just want everybody to take the time to enjoy your family. Tomorrow's not probably the time for the family to be together. Enjoy the time that you have with your family. Mm. And Sometimes you can put those petty things aside. It's just bigger than that, and it's not the time to work it out. Don't try to work out your family. You should get things together because you're going to ruin it for everybody else. But in turn, if it's something that's smaller than me, rest of the time, fix it. It's the holidays. It's nothing like spending time with them. Right. Creating memories and remembering old ones. Yes. Yes, and mm. remembering old ones. Mm -hmm. uh, well put, and we uh, we appreciate you again, Ms. TK. I bet you you do. Uh, Jay, Bye, you TK. You know, Bye. It, it's good, you keep that. All right, okay. so y'all take care. Happy holidays. This man over here to my right always well, starts something. I got you. Somebody <laughs> got to stir the pot up around Ain't here. Ain't nobody got to stir the pot up. Let man, the pot you did a good job a minute ago. I tell you. Let it just simmer, man. But I, I was boiling over for a minute there, buddy. Hey, listen, uh, folks, we are, uh, you can see we're on fire tonight. Yeah. Uh, great material, great content, man. I'm oh, just wait. loving the message Jeffrey coming that's next, coming man. across the, yeah. And we got Jeffrey on. next. The good Reverend Dr. Jeffrey, Jeffrey is going to be on next. next. So y'all stay tuned. We're going to take a song break. Uh, we'll be right back after this. Sorry, y'all, with Jeff. Welcome back with Bar Talk with Jay and again DJ Smooth Craft Deluxe with Cheese. <laughs> My man doing his thing. Yes, sir. Man, I'm telling you, man, you throw it down smoothly every time. Bro. I appreciate that, Jay. Man, I got to you you got a lot of tricks up your sleeve, you know. Man, you know what? I've been gifted. You know what I'm saying? I see. Hey, they me is the Lord. Yeah, you know? Boy, I tell you what, man, obviously I got the Lord next to me, boy. Yes, you sir. bless me all the time. Thank but you, we also got Jeffrey on the line. Jeffrey! 
Huh? He, no. He, he, he didn't come in. No, we ain't here yet. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I don't see. We, we, we got some, some. We got we some. We can't see what we can't see. Yeah, we, we, we got some information that, that he ain't there. For. That's all right. That's all right. It is. Uh, we, listen, we got a lot of content tonight, and we know uh, whatever's going on, he's in right order. So, man, let me tell you something. That's a bro that brother right there yeah. add a lot of value. Yes, sir. That brother comes to clean with, with it. Comes to clean with it. I can't wait to hear his perspective on tonight's talk, right? So uh, let's just dive in for a little bit, well, shall no, we? No, 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 no. No, let's have some fun like last time. Oh Lord, <laughs> bro, I thirst. That's right. We Jay gets to have some fun now. I'm a side crab. Oh, I gotta no. do it, baby. All day long. Now for all y'all to just join the show this time around. I we did throw out Thursday a couple weeks ago. I wouldn't. We do did my son, little Jerry. Okay. Okay. He didn't go nowhere. Still here. Yeah. Sitting in the backside right now. We ain't gonna show his picture or anything. But I was trying to give up my son, and again, you was getting, you was getting a bedroom set in a booty bag TV. Right. I was going to upgrade to a flat screen. Nobody hit me up. Right. So back to the booty bag. So All right. Oh, I, I that see was problem with that, Jack. Okay, it's okay. We'll, we'll get to that problem in a minute. Now, secondly, Barbara threw MJ out there. Yes. Okay. Baby MJ. Now, okay. baby MJ. Yeah. Didn't get no hits on him either. Okay. <laughs> okay. But again, he comes with a bedroom set. Barbara threw me in a 60 inch flat screen. Right. She wanted him going bad. Right. And she said if he if he came, if he came immediately, she threw in a, a dining room set. Well, dining room bed. No, no. She in threw in a suit. living room set. Living room set. Baby had a dining room suit too. She, she, she don't care. Just get out. <laughs> so, see, I see a problem with Hold on. Those. We we got a got a new one, bro. Love, Jay. We got a new one. Check it out, check it out. New one. Okay. I got one other son. That's right. We got John. <laughs> there he is. We, yeah, I don't do one of them with you. That's, and he still got to go. <laughs> his mama said he got to go. So, okay, his mama. Now, John, John has a girlfriend, okay. but if she don't get an email and a place to put him, yeah. he ain't going to have her for long. <laughs> okay. So, again, this is another one of my son comes from Good Loans. Right. He comes with a bedroom set, right. a booty back TV. Right. And again, and I will upgrade the booty back to a flat screen if he goes sometimes. But listen, so. he come with a girlfriend. That ain't gonna work out too. First good. of all, he ain't coming with nothing. He gonna go with whatever he has. Email. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you got a girlfriend and she ain't contributing, she ain't bringing out the best in you, yeah. then we're gonna have some problems. Now, one of the reasons yeah, why they do problem. throw out Thursdays is again, it's, it's not about throwing our kids out. Right. No, it's not. Right. But what it is, is one of the things that I really believe is when I was younger um, and I had kids and I didn't um, really plan it out. I did a lot of things and made some kids. But one of the things, it, it brought me into manhood early on because I had to be responsible. Okay. But I one like of that. the things that I do appreciate is I had women that seen something in me okay. and they stood by me. Right. And they invested in me and it helped bring some things out of me, which made me become the man today. Okay. Now, a lot of times with my kids, they spoil. Because again, I want to make sure my kids have everything, but they need that woman to pull the best out of them as well. Okay. And they haven't really found them, and I can't choose for them. I you, really can't, but I promise it's you, be it's gonna be- That does that? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Why would you talk about the other side? We yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. They can be the best out of themselves. Their father can bring the best no, no, out no. of them. When, when I say that, is I know God made women to help us, okay? okay? okay. And they can finesse and bring the best out of us. But okay. again, you got to bring some qualities to make them bring that out of you. Right. And I really feel like my boys are into a point in their life that they just need that extra push and they need that extra finesse. Okay. And I'm telling you, they're going to soar. Okay? And, because and underneath they me, they can't get the win and they got the wings. Yeah. And they, I'm telling they, you, once they get away from me and they get that crap. You're going to see them fly. And they're both highly, highly intelligent. And there you go. And certainly capable. Right? So, and and that note right there. Hold on. Hold on. And that note right there. Here's I ain't getting no email. I like that what you just said. Can you say it one more time if I get some more emails? They're both highly intelligent there you go. and capable. Of, and my email address is right? dot com. And, y'all. <laughs> and so, watch this, Jay. What's that? The problem with the whole thing. What's that? In order for the bird to leave the nest, mm -hmm. he got to be leaving for something better. <laughs> 
It's pretty damn good around here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Three hots in a cot. Hold on. Multiple rooms with music and, hold and pool tables hold and, hold and pools when, when and when, when convenience when I, stores hold on, around when, the when, corner. Hold on. When I get done, that is changing. That is changing. You know what I'm saying? He got I lots of cologne and ties and shoes keep, to choose from. Just I mean, I mean listen, there's no reason to leave <laughs> but this, right. man. Up. You know what I'm keep, saying? Keep it up. There's no reason to leave. <laughs> all, there's all no reason. Got a, he got all the I got to say, it's here. too good here, Jay. I'm getting double teamed. I'm getting double teamed right now. I'm going to tell y'all right now. <laughs> That's why my mom has left. He has a cap I'm going to have a pad lock on there today. A 60-inch screen don't compare to the luxuries around here. We got hot tubs and, and yards with you, fences sir. around it and and, and you that know, hot tub riding, with a lock on it. Riding along mowers. The, <laughs> the closest thing you'll get to a hot tub is that tub of things in your park. We got three or four extra <laughs> cars around here. It's about 19 computers in this one house. <laughs> you know, Sorry. guest rooms and I'm, I'm put, guest beds I'm and refrigerators. Codes on all and the cupboard is always full of foods, whether it be hot foods and cold foods. Sorry, and, I'm, I'm going to give it away. To the homeless. There's just no reason <laughs> to leave, Jay. Crap. I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, make sure we all understand the path that we own, and you know, the incentive is going to be greater than 60 inch flat screen. <laughs> How about a half million dollar trust fund? <laughs> How about they just take the whole house? Hey, hold on here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hold on. And y'all have the nerve to be clapping. Both of them come with hot tubs. Well, mine got a jacuzzi. Okay. Well, you know. Jacuzzi, hot tubs. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Why are you giving away the, the bar? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I already paid for it. Only thing you gotta do is pay property taxes. Right. Next time and daddy, bills. Right. When you, next time your daddy come home, say, Daddy, when you packing your shit to clean it out? And I'll tell you what, you gonna need him throw the hell out quick. <laughs> I'm saying that right. Right now, he say that. Hey. When you can afford to pay. Be like that. I oh. worked all day and bought you a new suitcase. <laughs> it's already packed. Oh yeah. Goodbye. He bought it for me to give right back to him. Right? You show me. Right, right. Y'all here spend your money on yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I tell you what, one of the things that's that we'll good be stuff, doing, though, Jay. I man, like yeah, but it's good stuff what you give because yeah. again, uh, and again, it's one of the conversations that we all gonna have a hard time with because again, we give so much to our children. Right. And we don't want to put our children. No. no. And, and again, I'm not really trying to put him out. I really want him to go to greatness. Mm -hmm. It's not about. I know for a fact I didn't even mean he will never be the biggest person he can be. Because again, I want him to be him. And, and it's hard when you're just underneath me. Right. And my thing is, he has the capability to be able to do whatever he wants. He can yeah. soar. Yeah. I already know it. Yeah. I just know he got to find the right people. He got to evaluate and make his own team, just like I made mine. And that takes time. And that's why I'm willing to work with him, just like most parents work with their kids. Right. Right. But it's a conversation. That's why I love having fun with it. Because if you don't have these conversations, then your kids just get comfortable. Right. And they feel entitled. And you feel like, well, when are they ever going to? Well, you're not making them feel like they should. you got to empower them. And, and there you go. And a lot of times, it also takes outside help. Right. Because, again, like when you coming around and you talking to them, it, it needs an extra person sometimes. Right. Man, don't be scared to have somebody else come in because a lot of times what you're saying is resonating slowly, but it's resonating. But when somebody else say it, it just impacts and it hits quick. Yeah. Let me let me let me just share an idea here before What's we go break. Um, and this is a, an idea about you know moving your kids on to the next level, mm -hmm. uh, having them to mature enough. Sometimes, and in fact, I, I'm going to go so far as to say all the time, mm -hmm. what every single person needs to soar is to be amongst other successful soaring people. Okay, so and I so, need to change his friends. Well, no, keep, keep no and let me just give you an example. Um, I'm right. Um, I knew that I wanted to go to college. Okay. But it wasn't until I got there and surrounded myself with like-minded people at the college. Mm -hmm. I was in a program. I was mandated to be at a certain place at a certain time to get the certain development that was going to take care of my future. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, a, it wasn't necessarily a choice that I made. My parents was like, you going to school. <laughs> mm -hmm. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And so it's, I think it, the next level 
is you can't mandate grown folk, especially grown folk who you know who are capable. But but a program is going to be the next best thing to be in there. It's like it's like having you around when you're not around, mm -hmm. and uh, and that might be a, a way. You know, uh, you know, send your send your kids to school, send your kids to the educational program, invest the money. If it's going to take five thousand dollars to get the, the the technical degree or the, the drivers, the CDLs or the technical skill, those are the things that set them apart and that will put them on the pathway to, to moving on to their greatest possibility. Um, it's, it, you know, that, that's just insight from parent to parent. Um, you know, programs work, right? Because they keep the kids motivated. But if not in a program, it's probably not gonna happen. Okay, so job court. Perhaps, okay. Yeah. I'm just, because these things come across my mind when you talk. Yeah. Like if college don't fit, yeah. and again, a lot of people might not be able to afford it because uh, the way cost. Beyond, it's way beyond that. Right, and like, like I said, I'm just throwing some out. different things out there for others. Not, yeah. it's not really just for mine, because my whole thing is, these are conversations that's not really coming to the forefront and to the table, right. and I really want them to, because again, it's, it's not always gonna be a comfortable conversation, but we can make it a little bit easier uh, right. by giving you some solutions, because remember, what you look at as a big problem, right. we're looking more at a solution to offset that big problem and make it little, and to make it also comfortable, right. because again, we ain't just trying to throw anybody to the wolves. And if y'all notice, I just did the boys, not the girls. Um, because again, I got good sense. I love my girls and I want to make sure they don't go to the arms of a bad man. Right. I don't even want my boys to go to a bad woman. I, I really feel like these are kings and my, my daughters are queens. But I treat all people the same. So when I say that, I'm looking at their friends as young kings. Right. And I want all of them to grow into that role. Right. And I have to show that respect level on the upfront, because right. it will be hard for anybody to grow. And that's why we try to give back to the homeless and we do other things, because yeah. it's up to us to show humanity that we have it in us. Yeah. And show love to all the world. Yeah. And not just to our own. Right. Because if you just, that's selfish. Mm -hmm. And this is about giving and loving. Right. And with my boys, I already see the love in them. Mm -hmm. so, See, a small reflection to me is when my son was saying, I got to do something for my boy because he hurt me and he needs something. I'm sitting there like, okay, that's that's not what I want to hear, but that's what I want to hear. Right. So he said things that make me proud, too, because I want them to do some things, but not in the middle of my show. <laughs> but he had to do it. Right. So guess what? I appreciate the fact that he's seen the love in him to give to others. Yeah. You, and that's, you what, that's what you're talking about. Man, and you know something, I'm glad I told him so. Yeah, I really do. Because yeah. he's showing me things that a lot of times I get in my emotions and I don't even see it. And that's why I tell people, get out your emotions. Because you miss so much when you get tied up in yourself. And I got out my emotions and I seen a lot of my son. And I really appreciate it because he's a loving kid. Yes, he is. And I'm Very trying so. to tell you, I ain't got no emails yet. So somebody else can find how much loving he is. I'm just trying yeah. to spread them around. Him, John. And MJ, I got three on the table. Three, y'all. Three. Yeah. Good men. Three. Right. We, we're going to reach for four. Somebody else out there got somebody else. Y'all need to email me, and we can get them on next week. We all know it ain't going to be next week. It's Thanksgiving. We're going to have to drop next. You know, this thing. We're going to do a special me and Craft real quick just to shout out to everybody. But bottom line, man, I believe in everybody got to be around their family and loved ones. So, again, I'm going to throw that out there real quick to let everybody know. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, director behind the cameras. Yes, we will let you know as well. <laughs> Next Thursday is going to be a no-go because I want all y'all to enjoy. If y'all got to go out of town and do anything, I have nothing but love for y'all. I will call y'all and check on y'all because that's just how much I care. Yeah. And I won't call Rocky because he'll be right next to me. <laughs> but again, with even with Rocks, we're going to do a lot of big things, man. Just so, love, just love. But again, Throw Out Thursdays is not for the negative. And I know a lot of people is like, yo, you being silly, you having fun. I'm having fun with a situation that I, it's not that fun, but it's something that needs to be talked well, about. Well, it's a growing because, opportunity. You know, it's an opportunity to talk about parenting. And uh, I don't believe we've had a show on parenting uh, in the past year or so, Jay. No. But uh, that's dialogue that we all need to be privy to. So that uh, so that we can understand maybe uh, how to you know change you know how to change things in our own home or perhaps how to coach a friend or a family in their home because uh, it's all about leadership you know uh, nobody's putting their children out we just talked about how to develop them to the point that they leave the nest there you go and, in, in uh, the right way in the right not way. just leaving 
because that means they might return. Right. Because again, whoever emailed me, there's no return. On <laughs> furniture or my child. Yeah, that's it. It's, right. This ain't Walmart. Don't come back and know we see talking nothing. They ain't leaving yeah. unless the stakes get much higher. So you should just go ahead and Man. go on with all that, bro. Hey, listen, uh, do I need to raise the ante? Yeah, I'll listen. raise the ante. Half million. <laughs> I mean, we got to go a little lower there. <laughs> I ain't hey. giving nobody no half million to take my son away now. Listen. Um, I can do a whole lot with that. <laughs> to uh, the good Reverend Dr. Jeffrey, your absence has not been in vain. Uh, this has been great dialogue. <laughs> for, uh, for parents and for children, um, you know, I, and I would, you know, we we're talking as parents and we're, we're we're sharing this thing in a very loving and friendly and fun way. But uh, somebody's got to be receiving this message, and uh, it's not in, you know, it's not with any pun intended. It's not to hurt feelings. It's not to press on anybody. Well, maybe press on you a little bit, because yeah. you know, pressure pressure makes things happen. Like, that's just the way it works. Yeah, so uh, maybe to turn up the intensity a little bit so you can move mm -hmm. on to the next level. But um, just another great segment, and uh, we miss you, Jeffrey. No sweat, no big deal. Uh, we know you got things going on, and uh, we appreciate any time you can give us. So uh, you folks, uh, just stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and take another break. And when we come back, it's time for Jay and I to go in Mm -hmm. on the topic tonight Let's uh, do this. again we're talking about what are you willing to sacrifice to be financially successful my son okay <laughs> he said, he said, he said, he said, we're about to go to break oh gosh but a half million <laughs> why you gotta be a half million give, give me a quarter five hundred thousand how about a quarter <laughs> can we get a quarter of a million yeah quarter of a million that might get done. Yeah. <laughs> Call it me. We put you on a payment program. Yeah, got to be back. How about this? This is Yeah. Hey, listen. Did that? Uh, two hundred fifty thousand up front, and then ten thousand a month for the next twenty-five months. How about? He, and he don't come back. He don't come back. Elba. Oh, Elba. So we're still taking care of him. So he might as well stay. Oh man, no. He man, let's go to break. Still no. your mouth and listen. You ask me some questions. I give you some answers from a man's point of view. Now, I got one reason for the hubbits with a single woman, and I got one reason for the hubbits with a single male. That's to why they might be single, but here is my disclaimer. Now, what I'm about to talk to might not apply to you, and it might don't apply to you. I don't want you to put your foot up in that shoe. But if it does apply to you, I want you to put both feet in both shoes and walk around in them because you're going to learn something tonight. Mm. Ladies, 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 you are first. Lady, you just might be seen because you are super independent. I mean, so independent right. that it borders lines on stuff. I mean, so independent that if a good man comes up and he wants to do for you, you don't even know how to accept it. I mean, so independent that you think about the feminist movement more than you think about the black family. I mean, so independent that the thought, the very thought of being vulnerable to a man scares the crap out of you. I mean, so independent that when you think about having to put something down, how to let somebody in, or opening yourself up to partnership, you would rather go it alone and play it safe. Right. Ladies, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. You can be as smart as you want to be. You can be as pretty as you want to be. Mm -hmm. You can be as uh, affluent and successful as you want to be. Mm -hmm. None of it compared to putting down that masculine energy and become feminine again. Yes. Because when you get to your feminine side again, you get into a natural posture that allows you to relax right. and just be you. Mm -hmm. I promise you this. No man that's really in tune with his masculinity is going to keep trying to do for a woman 
and keep shutting him out. Mm -hmm. So you stay strong. Yeah. You stay independent. You keep working hard. And stop wondering why you're single. Right. Because you're single because of your own foolishness. You're single because of all the things that you do, your ass is making your ass sing. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Ooh. Ouchy, ouchy. Ooh, ooh. We got we got the old Jeffrey. Yeah, <laughs> Jeffrey came mad. Right. And you you might need to work eleven hours. That twelve time to get to you. <laughs> I know, man. But listen, listen, he hit the nail, he hit the nail on again, man. That uh I mean, how many times have we met these extremely independent women? They like dudes sometimes. Yeah. You know? Come and, hard. Yeah, they come super hard. Uh and you know, the mouth mostly, you know, not the Throw no bad, no no bad rigs in there, but um, that mouth sometimes can be a problem, you know. Mm. And, uh, and there's not enough femininity in that. So at any rate, I won't be labor on the point, but uh, mm. I love it. I love it, brother Jeffrey. What you got for us next, man? Now, fellas, don't think I'm letting you off the hook. Uh oh, brother, you are next, fellas. You might be single because you want that old school treatment, but you don't want to put in that old school work. <laughs> I need you to feel me on this step. Go for it. Now it's easy to talk about how we want submission from our women. It's easy to say that women do this and women do do that, but the, back in the day, women used to be this way towards a man. Yeah, all that stuff is easy. That ain't nothing but deflection. Because back in the day, one thing men did is we weren't afraid to work real hard just to get a date from a woman. And when we got a date from a woman, we made sure that we planned that date. We made sure that we did the right types of things to show that woman the value that we bring to the table. Here's the thing I need you to understand, fellas. Old school values will bring out submission in a woman. Mm. But you have to put in the work. No woman's going to submit to you or follow you or partner with you if you are a lazy man, mm. if you won't put the work in. If you're afraid to get your hands a little greasy, if right. you're too pretty, if right. you don't want to put in that none of that work, she's just not going to follow you. Yeah. Now what she will do is she'll play around with you. <laughs> she'll let you uh, open the cookie jar every now and then, every now and then. Right. But eventually what will happen is she will take those cookies and she'll put them in a Ziploc bag and close it with that little extra little uh, lock they got on the Ziploc bag. Now, you know, back in the day, you just ran your hand across it. Now they got this lock that they run across it to right. make sure it's sealed and it stays fresh. Right. Fresh away from your ass. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to leave you single for that guy that knows how to unzip that Ziploc bag. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, See? and and I'm the guy. <laughs> what? I know how to work that bad boy. <laughs> hey, listen, how do zip lock locks compare to scissors? <laughs> what? <laughs> but I had cut balls back in the day. <laughs> You say what you want. And now that I'm doing a little last. Listen, I, I take ownership of this. Uh, men need to be men, no matter how it looks. Mm -hmm. Courtship, you know, chivalry is not dead. You got to put in the work, fellas. You got to do the dates. Whatever that takes, you know, there's so many definitions of, you know, even, you know, what dating should look like. Uh, but, but what we do know is that you got to try and you got to make people know that you want to be there and you got to make people know that you care about them just beyond the surface. And, uh, and that means, you know, that may mean gifts, that may mean flowers, uh, that may mean kind words and cards. Um, and men, believe me, you know, you got to get outside of your zone to do that stuff. Right. You know, you got to be thinking about a person to do that stuff. You don't, you know, it's not, you're not going to do that for somebody who's not that special. But for someone who's special, you know, you'll make a dinner reservation. And, uh, and you'll plan it out a week ahead. And you'll put together your outfit. You make sure your shoes shine that night, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm all about it, Jeffrey. The work has to be put in. And... Um, you know, there's a lot of men we see who aren't putting in the work. And maybe they don't want any more than just a cookie jar open every once in a while. That's mm. not a bad place to be sometime. But I'm a cookie monster. Uh, <laughs> I love but uh, we got to put in the work. So uh, I'm right on, man. Right on. On you, brother Jeffrey. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Man, listen to me for a second now. Brothers and sisters, I like to have fun with this. I like to talk about why some of us might be single. I'm going to tell you one of the biggest problems that we deal with. We're dealing with finger pointing. Mm. Black men don't do this. Black women don't do that. Men feel this way. 
Women feel that way. All we're doing is pointing the finger at each other, constantly dwelling on the problem. Not one time do we talk about the solution to the problem. Right. All we have to do is look in the mirror. Matter of fact, all we gotta do is look at each other yeah. and see that we are the solution to the problem. Yeah. Not the finger pointing part of it, but each other. Right. Finding a way to walk in concert. And when we start walking in concert, what happens is we start talking. And when we start talking, our communication improves. And once our lines of communication improve, we get understanding about what's been hurting us for so long. And then once we see what's, what's been hurting us, we can fix it. Right now, we're just pointing the fingers. Black women don't support black men. Black men don't know how to be men. All this other stuff. Instead of figuring out ways to just get along with each other. Right. To just talk to each other. So I'll, I'll submit this to you black men and, and black women. Stop pointing the finger and open your hands up. Extend your hand towards each other and grab each other's hand and hold each other's hand and just talk to each other. Yes. And when we start talking to each other, we become more familiar with each other and we begin to recognize that, hey, this woman has just been waiting on me or this man just needs to hear some words of encouragement from me. And then we get what we need from each other and we rebuild our communities. I say it all the time. Once we start talking to each other and we start rebuilding our communities, we will be a force to be reckoned with. That's the biggest fear right there. Not that the women will make it or not that the men will make it, but our community will make it. And when our community makes it, it's going to be an awesome thing to see. That's all I got. Man, that was a mouthful. I just want you to know that. Um, and again, it goes back to what we're trying to do is being more successful in life. And how you're going to be is that way right there. Giving back and, and understanding to open up to another and allow the love to flow through. And again, Jeffrey, we, we always vibe. Um, and that right there hit my soul. Mine too, bro. Because finger pointing is something we all need to let go. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a quick way to get the reflection off of you. And the bottom line, you need to look at you. And we need to make things in a more positive way and make change. Yeah, the old saying is that when you point one finger at someone else, there's, there's three fingers pointing right back at yourself. And so, uh, you know, it's important to, to take a look at that. Because um, in every, you know, argument or disagreement between two, I mean, in a couple, um, everyone is to blame, right? And if there's an argument of disagreement, everyone is to blame because everybody has the responsibility of stepping up the game. And, uh, and really, you know, stop blaming the other. And you don't have to necessarily blame yourself, but look at how you're contributing to the issue, right? And it takes an honest look at yourself to look at the situation and say that you could be at fault. I mean, you, that's being pretty earnest with yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you're earnest with yourself, you open the door for fruit, for good fruit to come into your relationship and even into your lives. Um, you know, th I think all of life is about self-reflection, right? Because if you're whole and complete in the mirror, then, uh, then you'll be whole and complete all around you. So uh, I'm, I'm, it's all over this one that uh, finger pointing is just never the answer. Um, it's time that we walk in concert with some understanding, and uh, and it it takes real love to get to understanding. That means I got to let go of my side, and I need to start thinking about my significant other side, maybe more important than my side, right? I got to give up a, a part of myself in order to make that uh, that collaboration unfold. And uh, so you know, we're we're just talking about being real and being real with yourselves. Um, the problem isn't always outside of us. Oftentimes, the problem is inside of us. So, uh, so I thank you for that tonight, Jeffrey. And uh, with that, let's just turn the corner for a moment. We got a couple minutes here. We'd love to hear your opinion on our topic tonight. Uh, the the question basically is, what are you willing to sacrifice to become financially successful? What do you what's your take? Say it one more time for me, Brother Crab. Sacrifice. Yeah, what are you willing to sacrifice to become financially successful? Oh my goodness, man. Listen, listen, listen. Let me let me let me just do this real quick. Yeah. 
want to get in a secluded little area so we don't have no background noise. Yeah, and and there we go. But now, first of all, you have to sacrifice short term, uh, what I'll call them, um, guilty gifts, if you will. Short term guilty gifts. Okay. A short term guilty gift could be eating out a whole lot. It could be uh, a pair of shoes that you want. It could be expensive shoes. Uh, it could be an expensive car. It could be an expensive place to live. The thing is, this is the mindset part of it. The wealthy mindset looks at the long-term goal and the return on anything that you spend. Most of your money with the wealthy mindset is going towards things that will either help you make money or won't cost you as much money in the long term. Right. So I think what happens when we get caught up, we get caught up in the things that make us feel good and look good in our broke situation, mm. as opposed to sacrificing on the more expensive clothing that still does nothing but cover our asses. Instead of getting the most expensive clothes, get some clothes that you know fit the bill, keep us warm, keep us covered, but doesn't cost as much. Right. We want to look good in our broke. <laughs> and that's the part that I'm willing to sacrifice, and I have sacrificed, quite honestly, I'm not sacrificing as much anymore because my kids are almost completely out of the house now. Right. So, yes, I splurged a little bit more. Right. But the bottom line of it is, in the midst of it, I drove a regular basic car, mm -hmm. a car that was paid for, no note, low insurance, because my money had to go toward making sure everything else was taken care of so those kids were fine. Right. Right. Man, I tell you, that's uh. He hit it, didn't he? He, he hit, hit it. He hit it every time. He hit it out the park. He hit it out the park. Um, what what do we call them? Guilty gifts. I like mm -hmm. that, right? Uh, you know, things that don't add value, and we spend a ton of our money and ton of our time and a ton of our resources on things that do not create fruit. They do not create success. And, uh, and we're going to spend a lot more time on that. But I appreciate your comments, Jeffrey. Any, uh, any parting words for us tonight? Oh, man, I, I tell you, now, this, this subject right here is important. Um, economic intelligence, financial intelligence, financial stewardship, those are things that will take us to the next level because we got the money. Don't right. think we don't have the money as a community. Right. We just have to be wise in the way that we spend and invest our money. So I appreciate this topic, and I'm glad to see what's going to come come out of it. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Thank you so much, man. Folks, the good Reverend Dr. Jeffrey, once again, we definitely want to want to promote that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, your history, man. What, 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 some so the you know, crazy thing is um, I have a real background in business, in music business, and um, mm -hmm. I was, came real heavy from the Christian world of musician. I was a music director in church. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, we're talking major church. Right. You know, where Bishop gets in the Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Right. That's an right. organ. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's so, you? Yeah, that's, that's me backing him up. Right. Come on, I'm in the key of E flat. I feel like going home here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm the, the music director for those churches, and I get off them because I play the drums and the keys. Okay. So I have a real, and I wrote my first record when I was like 16. Nice. Taught myself to play the keys. Yeah. I remember a story, I was 11 years old playing drums, and my parents messed around and got me drum lessons. And after the first lesson, the drum instructor walked out to my parents and gave the money back and said, I should be taking lessons from your son. Wow. So wow. I've always been inclined, and that's what's tatted on me. It's just music is my whole story on my body. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, just growing up in music and, and cultivating that and loving it. And I, I had got gravitated to the business side of it. Okay, okay. And that's why I found that a lot of artists lack. So I gained getting my own money independently without labor. Okay. That's what I viciously wanted to do right. at the age of 20. Right. I wanted to figure out how I can sell my own records at a mass quantity. And so I looked up one day and I said, how can I do that? Where's my demographic right now? My demographic at that time was 13 and 18. Okay. Listeners. Okay. I said, where they at right now? I looked at the clock and it was like 2 o'clock and I said, they're in school. I said, I need to go into school. Okay. And so I'm hoping I go in and take the plaza issues of life today. Yeah. Middle schools and high schools and I'm going to do all school assemblies. Okay. And I was one of the number one youth motivational speaker in the country in 2010. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because of the way that I did it. Right. They don't go to sleep with my son. Right. So, right. You know, right. They don't go to sleep with my son. They don't either, go to sleep with my son. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So it got the administrator's attention. Okay. Because it was like, 
okay, we can pay this kid to come in, and they actually listen to him. Right. But he's respectful to the administration. Yeah. Exactly. This, this kid's doing it for a business. Right. So right. I traveled the country, did that, and, and long story longer, uh, I um, got tired of the Christian world. Okay. And uh, got some stories, got some things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we all do. You know, but um, and then I decided, I, I, long story, I went R&B in my home. Okay. And, and that opened up some crazy. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I mean, it was being myself. I'm the okay. happiest I was being. Man, man, man. Okay, man. King Kenny. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I love King it. King of happiness. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just excited about your presence, man. You know oh, what I'm saying? You just smiling and energy. I told you, you, you got know, that good vibe, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I like that. I got that yeah, when I first man. met him. I was like, yeah, man. let alone he was sharp, yeah. bro. Right, I'm right, like, how are you going to be sitting in the office looking that sharp? Right. <laughs> then to find out all what he do, he's like, okay, that's why you're sharp. Yeah, yeah. You ain't just sharp for no good reason. I want to just make a just a, a, a reference, and I'm, I'm gonna make a reference, and then you can just comment yeah. on it, okay? Because yeah. I hear something that I think is meaningful to our show tonight. Uh, we're talking about what what are you willing to sacrifice to become financially successful, and it may not necessarily be financial success in mm -hmm. the end that what you ultimately want. But I heard you made a transition from. Christian music from gospel music mm -hmm. to now R&B mm -hmm. uh, was that a major sacrifice? No, because in my Christian music I was making music as if God was talking to ladies so even in that it was Christian R&B. Okay. It was, if you look at from under my old name, K.D. Johnson mm -hmm. um, you would hear the music and it was you know, you can search all over and over and over you won't find nobody like me. Right. And that's, you know, single mothers. I was always on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was just because of my upbringing, of father being the chaplain of the coach. Right. Um, you grow up, your daddy was a firefighter. He was a firefighter. Daddy was a police officer, usually. Right. Right. He was a preacher. Right. Uh, I'm a Christian. So, right. so I was doing it to please other people. Okay. And broke away from that. I don't think it was really much sacrificing from the switch to Christian to R&B. I think what I had to sacrifice was the opinions of people when I made the switch. Okay. Being comfortable with making that decision and understanding that's going to come some kickback. Um, and, and tell me about the kickback, because that, that's, that's part of the issue. Yeah. Man, is we, when we try to make change for ourselves, we get a lot of pushback. It was, it, was, it was kickback for about a week until I went viral on a video and basically said, you know how in the Bible they say that uh, he without who is without sin cast first stone. Right. So in the video, I basically said, "He who does not listen to R and B, please say something." I mean, church folk. Right. Sunday, Monday, R and B, R and B, hip hop. Yeah. Maybe some of them bang me goes. Right. Right. <laughs> so right. it's funny how when you put it in the perspective of if I do this, mm -hmm. and then you still talk about me, I pretty much put that to rest uh, because. 90% of people, that's not even just the African American culture. Some of us were born based on R&B music. My man daddy was bumping R&B music. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, the world so, would never be yeah. without R&B music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but in order to sacrifice, there's been many sacrifices I've made to become financially successful. Okay. Uh, okay. A lot. Yeah. Um, Tell us yeah. about some of those, just off the top of your head. What, what comes to mind? I'm the mind? type that would rather have it, but not look like I have it, but really have it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have to sacrifice. In, in, in this industry, I picked up very early. You know, I looked at the, the demographic of careers that you have. Their salaries based on image and perception of, for instance, attorneys. Okay. Who's going to spend the most on clothes? I looked up stuff like that. Okay, who's going to spend the most on a construction worker or an attorney? An attorney has to have police suits. So I, I kind of got in that kind of stuff. And I realized in the entertainment industry, perception is reality. Yes. And so you got. You, I got homies right now that blow bags on Versace and, and then calling me asking, can they get money for rent? Right. <laughs> right. That's a problem. <laughs> like that's deep yeah. in this world. And so one of the things I had to do was be okay with, if you see me da driving down the street in a car, you probably didn't think I'd be driving. Please understand I have no car payment. Yes. Right. Right. I can go by a <laughs> state when I want you see to. What I'm saying? Right? Yeah. I have no car payment. Right. I can I'm go out. I'm check the check. I, you know, I, I have no car payment. My car is paying cash. Exactly. Exactly, and I think yeah. that's a that, that's a great lead into uh, to tonight's discussion, because um, the topic of being willing to sacrifice to become financially successful is really about managing one's self, mm -hmm. right? It's like, am I gonna am I gonna blow something that I I need to be saving for tomorrow? Am I gonna blow it for the here and now, where where it has no value? 
uh, where it only satisfies my particular now, the person I'm dating, the world's opinions, the, you know, I fit in with the style and the fad, but yet I don't have any money, I don't have any gravy to lean on for tomorrow. You have to work on your character daily, I do, because money only enhances who you really are. Right. So if you were an alcoholic before you had money, when you get money, you're an even more well-off alcoholic. Absolutely. So you have to maintain and discipline yourself and those things so that you can fully function when you do have money. Absolutely. Discipline and proper discipline. Because it only enhances who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, we like to get back to principles and uh, kind of the, the bottom line of things. And if you're going to be financially successful, you're going to have to hold back. Mm -hmm. That's just the bottom line. If you're going to buy a house, if you're going to own a house, you're going to have to have some reserve. Yeah. You're going to have to have down payment. Yeah. You're going to have to have money to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And it and those monies um, should not interrupt your daily life. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about living with with a cushion. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and 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 the cushion is not necessarily what you have today. The cushion oftentimes will be what you're saving up for right. for tomorrow. Right. We all are supposed to be saving for retirement. Mm -hmm. We are all supposed to be investing and you know putting money aside and you know um, participating in banking programs that will set us up so that we'll have a nest egg of money to live in our elder years when we cannot work. Right. Okay, and it goes much further than that because every single person that we know of who has quote unquote made it big who are uh, extremely wealthy they all can tell you stories when they went bankrupt right. they can all tell you stories when they ate ramen noodles for six years right. and Tyler Perry stories when he slept sleeping out of his car and you know <laughs> you know there's, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these stories where people are um, going the extra mile to protect tomorrow and uh, and and so anything that you are going to have is going to take that kind of commitment Absolutely. period it's not just about money it's success in every area of your life if you're going to have to if you're going to have uh, if you're going to build a home once again um, you're going to have to find a way to cut the corners cut the Starbucks out Cut out the weekend shopping sprees. Just because you got twenty dollars in your pocket, that don't mean you got twenty dollars to spend. It's a decision, right? Right. That's something you guys said earlier. You guys were talking about love, and I didn't get it. You guys, that's what I feel in my music. I try to express that love is not a feeling; it's a decision. Absolutely. Because there are mornings I feel like waking up and I don't feel like loving. Right. So right. people got this wrong. With these millennials even have it wrong. Because I was telling him by age, I'm a millennial, but my mental is such a baby boy. Mm -hmm. So old school and proud. Right. Right. And like love is because I wake up in mornings and I'll be like, get away from me. I don't, I don't like you. Right. <laughs> and if I go based on feeling, I'm in trouble. Absolutely. So Absolutely. even the money thing is a decision. You have to make a decision to stick to it. Yeah. Now what I like about that, um, I made many decisions. Um, and, and truthfully, I actually was led by what other people told me. You know, when I when I look at when I was raised and I, and I look at when I got out of school and and I had kids early. And I supported them, and I took care of them, you know, get a house, get married. I started listening to the things that was told to me, and I started doing them things. Right. And I got a job, and I, and I worked hard, and I got money, and I saved it, and I bought a house. And I did a lot of things that people told me to do. I didn't live my life for me. Right. I lived my life for people. Right. Because this is what people told me. Right. You know, and when I'm thinking I made everybody, made everybody happy for me. You got the house, you, you're doing this, but I ain't living my life. Right. Okay? Right. So what I had to sacrifice was the bull crap that everybody told me and started living for me. Then I started pushing away from all the designers and all the stuff that my wife was nice enough to go buy with my money. Mm -hmm. My closet is full to today right. with stuff she wouldn't bought me. That's still <coughs> in fashion. Right. You're not giving her mad credit because she had great sense on right. how to spend the money. Right. Okay. Yeah. But it was a whole lot of spending back then that don't have to happen now. Right. Okay? Right. That portion of it is gone. Right. All right? Now, I got the BMW that I can drive around and I can front, floss, and all the other good cute stuff. And it drives on the weekend. Why? Because I drive a van. Right. 
Now the van go yeah. everybody off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know? But yeah, I drive that van. Off, Jeff. What? Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, I drive that van, a Honda Odyssey van. I'm telling you right now. One day, like no respect, bro. No respect. When I pull out, people cut me off. They be like, man, soccer dad, hell yeah, to yeah, the dog. Yeah. I'ma tell you all day long. Yeah. I enjoy driving it because the perception I'm giving is a real one. Because that van was to drive around families back in the day. Well, my family's broke. Right. So when people see me, they you must got young kids. You got the wrong thought of me already. Right. But guess what? I like it. Because you just don't know me. So you're going to take the time to really know me, or you're going to judge me. Right. My whole thing is that shouldn't even be the first thing. that. But I will say, yeah. we buy things for women. Because when I bought my BMW, I ain't buy it for me. I knew that one was, 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 was a woman magnet. And then they said the ultimate driving machine. They ain't lie either. It drove good till I took it to the dealership. They was the ultimate driving machine. Right. They almost drove me about it. Because right. it's a lot right. of cost yeah, to what you want to play right. with. Right. So watch your expenses, but give up everything that's around you. Because sometimes what's around you influence you in the wrong way. Yeah, we're all influenced by something. And yes. I say, go back to you and what makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And then you start influencing. And then you become a mentor. Right. You become that change that people really need, but nobody's even saying nothing about. It. Because you can ride around a van. I can ride around a van comfortably with no problem, knowing I have a lot more to offer than a van. Right. But the bottom line is, I don't have to front and just drive a car that everybody wants to see. I can drive with it. I make that vehicle. Yeah. But see, people get it twisted and be like, no, you, you got to be here. That's your perception. Mine is I make the vehicle because it don't break down. Mm -hmm. Any vehicle to leave me on the side of the road, I promise you, once I get home, it's gone out of my life. Mm -hmm. Like anything else. Discipline. Don't let me down. Discipline. Yeah, see, <laughs> see and you don't, you don't get that discipline until you really know what you want. Right. Right? It's almost impossible to get that level of discipline until you've decided what you want. Because yeah, once you've decided what you want, once you, you're at A and you decide what B is for your life, that then you have the ability to say no. And I'm going to tell you something. This is crazy. I tell, women, I tell women, do not date a man. Do not marry a man until he's in his 30s. Because it's not, as he is, it's not until he's in his 30s that he's found out what he really wants to do with his life forever. Oh, we gotta go to break on yeah, that one. Yeah. We gotta go to break on that one because again, I don't always throw an age on it. But I can also tell you some people mature faster. Some, some but do. the bottom line is yeah. give it time Absolutely. to find out where you wanna be. Go ahead. Kick us off with one of those under pressure. Oh, right there. Oh, that's under pressure right now. Coming back with Ken Bar talk with Jay, and again we got King. King, what? Playing all oh, his music. Lord have mercy. This man is young with an old man soul. Really, right? Arm beat to <laughs> death. Again, we got that. We was able to hear about some of your um, give ups yeah. to get to where you at. Yeah. Those are accomplishments yeah. that we have to sacrifice. And again, most people don't even understand that. And again, uh, to a lot of young people out there, they really feel like it's easy mm -hmm. um, because they, they see celebrities out there and they be like, I can just do this. And it's really a sacrifice. Um, so one of the things I appreciate you coming on to let them know that you went to schools, you did things out the box. Correct. Because I like to say, if you think money makes you where you need to be, I like to say, truthfully, most success comes from when you don't have money. Right. And you can find ways to make money. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are willing to invest in you. You got to see it in you. Right. And a lot of times, everybody feel like it's just money. Right. Okay. Right. Chasing money is not a chasing of a dream. Mm -hmm. It's to have it in you. And then money seeks money out. And then, there you money go. So Absolutely. find out where you at, yeah. but understand your purpose. Absolutely. Or else you're going to be chasing something that you might not be able to achieve. And mm -hmm. I really feel like that's why you see some homeless people today. Because some of them had desires, but they didn't follow their passion, their purpose. Right. And I don't blame them at all because I'm, I could be a step away. 
But the one thing I will do is help another fellow man out. There you go. And this is the given season to make sure we do what we can, but to stay in line. What's right. what's for you right. and don't live for somebody else. Right. Because again, be the best you. Right. So if I have to give up something, it's trying to be somebody else. Right. So my sacrifice for success is giving up on being somebody else and being the best me as possible. Absolutely. And that's what I would Absolutely. give anybody. But I'm gonna give it to the same one of us saying that. Come on. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, just the whole idea of sacrifice is to give up something to get something. I mean, let's just make it as simple as that, to give up something to get something. If you are going to be financially successful, you've got to know that it's a road to that process. And it's not an easy road, it's not a quick road, it's not a get-rich-quick type scheme and mentality. You've got to have a plan, you've got to live below your means, and you've got to be a thinker. You know, when situations come upon you, you got to decide, hey, you know, am I going to waste $100 on a meal? Or am I going to go get me a nice $15, $20 meal and, uh, you know, and put the rest of that money in the vault? I remember my father paying for vacations, family vacations, by saving coins and $1 bills. And all he would do, he'd just make sure that he would never spend his change. And anytime he had a $1 bill that had an odd number on it, he put it in the box. And so it took sacrifice, right? And I remember him used to always say, he, he and my mother used to always kind of talk about, insinuate the things that they wanted, but they weren't going to go get. My mom would say, hey, you know what, I want a new dress, but uh, you got to go to college. <laughs> you know? I'm like, mom, why are you putting that all on me? But she was sacrificing so that we could go to the next level. She was giving up something in, in order for her son to have something and to get something. So, um, being successful in any area of, of any human endeavor requires that sacrifice. Um, if, you are, if you have a passion for X, you have a passion for dancing or, or writing or whatever the case may be, if you spend the time to develop your craft, that means you gotta be laser focused, you gotta work hard, you gotta be diligent, and you gotta keep doing it over and over and over when they tell you no, you gotta still continue to do that work. That is a part of the sacrifice that we're talking about here. It takes digging in and not listening to what the world has to say, creating a plan, and just driving forward every single day. That's what it takes to be successful, right? The definition of success is the um, progressive realization of predetermined, worthwhile, personal goals. That means I'm going to decide where I'm going, and then I'm going to create the measurement tool on how I get there. And just because I don't have on the nicest clothes or drive the nicest car or live in the nicest house don't mean I'm not working towards something really, really big. Mm -hmm. And we have to get the world off, off of our shoulders. we got to get the world out of our eyesight because the world don't know where we're going. And if the world is judging you because you don't have the nice clothes or the nice car or something, they don't see your bank account, right? They're not going to see you in 20 years when you're taking trips all over the world and you put your kids through college and you're now driving the finest car automobile there is, to, you know, actually, by the time you live that much life sacrificing, you ain't gonna want one of them $300,000 automobiles. All you gonna want, <laughs> all you gonna want is transportation, because now you are conditioned to have right thinking and to use your money wisely. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I'm kind of getting to the point now where I'm like, man, I'm never gonna spend that money. You know, I like eating steaks too much. I'm not gonna spend money on nonsense. I'm gonna spend money on the good stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, my friend this past week had a, tragedy or a place burned up, I had money to give to give to her. I just shot her some money and now I'm working on putting some stuff together for her. Um, but I couldn't do that if I went out and bought that Jag that I wanted last year. Right? If I bought that Jag I wanted, I'd be spending seven, eight hundred dollars a month. And ain't nobody gonna see me except for Friday and Saturday night and maybe pass by me on the road. Stop living the small life folks. Mm -hmm. The big life is about having a reserve, a reservoir, right? So that you can live life smoothly and it's never based on circumstances. It's never based on the situations that life hand to you. It's just based on your ability to put your hand in the vault and be able to provide for yourself because you prepared for the shortcomings. Yeah, you guys said something uh, that made me think because when I hear you have to give up to go up, when you say, when you guys are saying one of the things to be successful is a tangible thing, 
find something that people develop a skill, something, create something, have something that other people want. Mm -hmm. And when you go around and you meet a bunch of people, you're going to run into somebody who has something you want. Right. Now, people don't understand the level of bartering. It ain't always cash. It's, I got something you want. Right. You got something I want. Yeah, you I'm go. going to give up to go up. Right. Right? Right. We right. have to learn so. this. So, some people may look and go, well, why is my life not doing anything? Why am I not going anywhere? Why am I not doing anything? Because you don't have something people want. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Right? Right. <laughs> Period. All right. right. Eye opener. Right. Eye opener. Right. I like that. And I'll tell and, you what. Tell you what. Before we go, uh, Craft, my gift to your mother, I'm going to get her that dress that she talked about. Okay. 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 For Christmas. Yeah. We're gonna go shopping. Okay. And we're gonna That's get your mother. <laughs> that because see, I listen yeah. and I respect and I wanna give back. Yeah. Because she, she sacrificed for you. Right. You gave so much to me that I wanna give back to her. That's special. And Jay. that's so how that. we need to bar. Yeah, and Jay, you, there you that's go, how see. we need to grow. You should know that yeah. she listens to the show and will be holding you accountable. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, she hey, might not understand. Hey, that hey, dress she wanted was way back then. Hey, it didn't cost that much. You just see, she wanted that new dress. Mama, she, understand. She, when you did this, it was way this, back in the college she days. She's high class now. She just she got, high class. She just got well, back. She's going to get an old dress. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama going to get an old dress. Yeah, she's she going to be a high class old dress. She just got back from uh, her fourth trip from Africa. Okay, and, uh, well, she's an eclectic woman, but she saves her coins so she can go to the motherland okay. and see life, you know, as uh, you know, as we all should be seeing that life and what's going on there. Well, so one thing I want to say is number one, respect to her yeah. and you, your father, yeah. both y'all, uh, both of them, for collaborating a great son that, and, that and came Jay, into my life major, right? and added value to me. Yeah. So I want to give back to her and him. It's just you mentioned a gift that she sacrificed mm -hmm. that I want to give back because her sacrifice came too far. Yeah. And it came out so beautifully yeah. that somebody else wanted to give something. Yeah. This off of what you just said. That's and awesome. again, that's, that's what awesome. we do at Bar Talk with Jay. That's awesome. We keep giving and we want y'all to start yeah. doing the same. Because again, if we don't start listening to each other and giving back off of what we hear, then we're only going to point fingers. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it ain't uh, coming back. And no, it it's just blank. It ain't never coming back. Um, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just rattle off just a couple of sentences here in closing because these are some things that we did not talk about, but these are potentially some processes that'll help you sacrifice toward financial success. Uh, things like 401k. Mm. Okay, you don't even see that money coming out. It just comes out and it's gone to your retirement, and it's it takes a whole lot for you to get that money out of that system. It's going to be there for retirement, and uh, it's great money. They're going to match it. Um, there's always the investment world from stocks. Uh, you know, you got fast-paced stocks, slower stocks. You got futures. You got uh, let's, uh, just just come across Bitcoin, uh, another opportunity for a different level of currency going on in the world. Yeah. There's so many ways. Money and financial success is something that we have to study. We got to work toward. We got to create a plan. We got to invite intelligence and wisdom and people who've been there and done that to come and help us, give us their 20 years of experience in money management, and we'll find ourselves on a path to creating something that's going to last far beyond just our work years and that's really what it's all about you know there's retirement plans there's wills there's trusts there's savings there's checking accounts there's cds i mean it's just a plethora of knowledge and information out there to become financially successful and once you attack any one of those it's going to require you to spend less it's going to require you to take money that you once upon a time put on nonsense and now put it into some real sense so that it can work for you and work for your family for years and years to come. So uh, let's get focused on those kind of things, folks, because uh, financial success is where real freedom lies, right? I mean, you can have peace and freedom, but it's more peace and freedom if you got some money, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? We just say it like that. And uh, any further comments on that, Jack? No, man. I mean, again, I like to say how we did this is how it should be structured. Make sure you have a plan. Right. Understand what you're going through. Uh, I like to say King Kendall came through with great wisdom. Um, yeah, and it's man. great to see a young man yeah. with 
a mindset like he does right. because it lets me know there's hope and I don't need to just look at others in certain ways. I need to understand, be more open. Yeah. Quit being judgmental. Right. And just looking at a person and giving a quick reflection of a tattoo in a suit when you don't even understand their mind. There you go. So quit there judging you go. and let's start observing and listening. And you know Listen. something? We will start reaching our hands out mm -hmm. and shake each other mm -hmm. the way we should. Absolutely. Kings, queens, and understand. Know your fellow man. Yeah, I that's for Thanksgiving. Because again, no show Thanksgiving Day. Don't show up talking about what's happening. We'll do some shout outs. We're going to do some things. I want everybody to enjoy this holiday. I got to come back and well, talk about uh, the first. Oh, yeah, well, well we, we, we can yeah. come back. Don't yeah. worry. Yeah, we'll do videos. folks, if you have not <laughs> made plans for a New Year's, oh, uh, we New gonna Year's do Day, a pajama party. We got an yeah. event going on, and we think uh, y'all gonna like. Actually, uh, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Kendall has a, yes. a, a show. Yes. I'll be there, just participate. What? what? <laughs> Is he gonna be your grandma's party? Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, Sweet potato uh, pie and everything. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Okay, hey, we're well, gonna have to go on this one because yeah, y'all gonna get us in trouble. We sure is, and I'm gonna be there too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and listen, uh, God bless you all. Thank you yeah. for being with us. This is Bar Talk with Jay. Hopefully, this has been an inspiring uh, show for you. Uh, some good gravy, some good tools. If you if you don't see all the value in it for you, share it with somebody else because somebody needs to hear about how to be financially successful and what sacrifice they need to make. So thank you all again. We love you. We're going to see you in two weeks uh, at our next show. We got That's fire right. plans. Right. We're going to keep the, the wisdom and, uh, and understanding and uh, just this great kind word going on over and over again. So uh, without further ado. We'll see Ain't no last calls here. Bar Talk with Jay.